Hi class, little bit of linear algebra. If you remember theorem five, that first link non-singularity to the existence of non-trivial solutions to systems of linear equations and row equivalents to I, you'll know that we've recently expanded to theorem five by adding a line about the determinant. Today we're gonna expand further expand further. Theorem 23. If A is an N by N matrix, the following are equivalent. One, A is non-singular, as in A inverse exists. Two, AX is equal to the zero vector, has only the trivial solution. Three, A is row equivalent to I. Four, the determinant of A is not zero. Five, the columns of A are linearly independent. And six, the rows of A are linearly independent. Let's prove this. What you'll recall, hopefully, is that when we established theorem five, we showed the equivalence of one, two, three, and four, excuse me, one, two, and three. And then when we did theorem 18, we showed the equivalence of one, two, three to four. So it's left to show that five and six are equivalent to one, two, three, and four. Because one, two, three, and four are all equivalent to each other, we actually only need to show that five is equivalent to one of these statements and six is equivalent to one of these statements. So we're going to show that five is equivalent to two. Okay. So say A is a uh, matrix with column vectors given by the A sub n, A sub i's. And say that zero is equal to C1, A1, plus dot dot dot, plus CN, AN. We're looking to test the linear independence of, of the columns of A. By matrix multiplication, this is A times the matrix C1 through CN. Okay. If five is true and the AIs are linearly independent, then C has to be equal to the zero vector, and AX is equal to zero, has only the trivial solution. If, on the other hand, the AIs are linearly dependent, then there will exist a non-zero vector, C, given by the C1s through the CNs. And this will give a non-trivial solution to the equation AX is equal to zero. That non-trivial solution is C. If five is true, two is true. If five is not true, 
two is not true. We've established that five is equivalent to two. Now we're going to show that six is equivalent to four. If A has linearly independent rows, then just by taking the transpose, A transpose has linearly independent columns. We know that the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of A transpose. And since A transpose has linearly independent columns, and we've shown that 5 is equivalent to 1, 2, 3, and 4, we will know that the determinant of A transpose is not equal to 0. If 6 is true, then 4 is true. If, on the other hand, 6 is not true, and A has linearly dependent rows, by a similar trick, we know that A transpose has linearly dependent columns. So the determinant of A is equal to the determinant of A transpose. And since it has linearly dependent columns, its determinant is 0. So if 6 is not true, 4 is not true. Thus, we've proved that 6 is equivalent to 4. This ends the proof. QED. Let's look at a little example. So what can we say? about the dimension. And I'm going to put dimension in quotes here because we haven't really defined it, even though we do have an intuition about what it might mean. What can we say about the dimension of the column space of the matrix? A is equal to 3, 5, 2, 4. Well, let's start with the determinant. This is going to be 3 by 4, minus 2 by 5, which is 12, minus 10, which is 2, which is certainly not 0. So we actually have a lot of information about this matrix. By the above theorem, we know that A is non-singular. We know that AX is equal to 0 vector, has only the trivial solution. We know that A is row equivalent to I. We also know that the columns of A are linearly independent. So 3, 2, and 5, 4 are linearly independent. We know that the rows are linearly independent. So 3, 5, and 2, 4 are linearly independent. Okay, we're concerned about the column space, and we know that the two columns are linearly independent. That means that as vectors, they are not scalar multiples of each other at the very least. They do not form a line. So what we know is that the dimension of the column space is at least two. We want to be able to say more, and in the future we will say more. But for now, here's an exercise for you. Are the columns of 1, 3, 2, 4, are they linearly independent? Now you have a number of ways to figure this out. You should have some lingering questions from this, some of which I kind of laid up. Um, how do we find, how do we define the dimension 
of a vector space. In particular, how do we find the dimension of the column space of a matrix A, the row space of a matrix A, or the null space of a matrix A? Think on this. More on this later. See you next time.